A top 10 pick is falling hard in the draft. According to a CBS reporter, one player is not who he think he is. Disastrous workouts, disastrous interviews. And they're pushing him through the workout and he is not in shape enough to get through it. Ultimately, just walks out of the workout. He says, I can't do this anymore. I can't do this. Walks out of the workout, leaves the court, goes to the locker room. One of the staff members walks in the locker room. He's hitting a vape pen in the locker room. <laughs> he dropped it and put his foot on top of it and was like, hey, what's up? <laughs> oh my God, which top 10 pick is that? But there will be a gigantic trade in this year's draft. This mock has two big trades. Reports say the Blazers, Rockets, and Pistons are being aggressive in trading their picks. But what happens to Brandon Miller? The potential number two pick has serious legal issues. He hasn't been charged, but teams are nervous. But at number one overall, the Spurs take Scoot Hender. I'm just kidding. Victor Wimbanyama, seven foot three center from France. A mix of Rudy Gobert, Kevin Durant, and Dirk Nowitzki. Yes, please. Hey, Victor, either you're the best player since LeBron James or a complete failure. No pressure. Number two, the Hornets take Scoot Henderson, six foot two guard from the G League. Yes, I've seen Brandon Miller in plenty of mocks. He makes more sense for their roster. But Scoot is the best available. The Hornets are so bad, they can't afford to pass up an elite talent. The one place you don't draft for fit is the top of the draft because you could easily get burned by passing on an all-star. Scoot does have experience playing off the ball and LaMelo's health can be shaky. Scoot's comp is a young Russell Westbrook or prime Derrick Rose. Let's say worst case scenario, both Scoot and LaMelo are good as bold dominant guards. You trade one of them. Charlotte has five picks in this draft to fill out the rest of the roster. At number three, the Blazers take Brandon Miller, six foot nine wing from Alabama. They keep this pick, they don't trade it. I think that's crazy, but the best report I saw on this was from an ESPN draft person who used to work with one of the Blazers' top front office guys. So he should know. He said, I don't see Portland trading the pick. I think they'd be very happy with Brandon Miller or Scoot Henderson. What trade are you gonna make that makes them a final contender right away? They want to build. And if that happens on draft night, expect Dame to be traded quick. He has said he's not gonna play with another teenager like Brandon Miller. But Miller is a perfect fit with Shaden Sharp on the wing because Miller's scoring is great with Sharp's athletic ability. He is a very good shooter shooter and defender at six foot nine he could be a future paul george at four our first big trade the rockets get pascal siakam for jalen green kevin porter jr and the fourth overall pick who they use on amen thompson six seven point guard from the overtime elite houston plans to sign james harden but they get word that jalen brown is staying in boston with a supermax so instead, they trade for Pascal Siakam. Rockets fans might hate all they're giving in this trade, but the Raptors are trading for potential. There's a chance in five years, Jalen Green or Amin Thompson don't pan out, and the Rockets fleece this trade. Pascal played like an all-star last year. He is a great fit with James Harden, unlike Jalen Green and KPJ. Amin's comp is a tall John Morant. He is a playmaker, good in transition, athletic, a plus defender, all things that Toronto needs. At five, the Pistons take Cam Whitmore, 6'6 wing from Villanova. He is an explosive athlete who doesn't need the ball to score. That is perfect for them. Kate Cunningham, Jaden Ivey, they can create for Cam. Dude is also a good on-ball defender. And while picking at five sucks, this is a pick who will at least become a solid starter. At six, the Magic take Osser Thompson, 6'6 six, six guard from overtime. Honestly, while I was looking at Osser and Amen, I almost kind of like Osser better. The Magic are built around Paolo Bancaro and Franz Wagner in the front court. They get Osser, who is a playmaker in the back court. He's an athletic finisher, very good defender. Orlando also needs shooting bad, but they have two lottery picks to get that elsewhere. At seven, the Pacers take Jarris Walker, 6'8 forward from Houston. Indy is awful on defense. Walker, maybe the best defender outside of Wimbanyana. He's 6'8, 250 with good lateral quickness. He's like a freak linebacker. He can switch onto anyone and finish at the rim in pick and roll. Look at their current forwards, Buddy Heald, Aaron Neesmith. So Jarris is a perfect potential long-term starter there. His weakness is shooting, but you can't have everything with the number seven pick in the draft. At 
eight, the Wizards take Anthony Black, six, seven card from Arkansas. That is tall. They call it the highest basketball IQ in the draft. That's a fit anywhere. But Black is the kind of guard who is pass first with good defense, kind of a Lonzo ball. But like Zoe, he can play off the ball, which works with Bradley Beal, or he can play point. I mean, the Wizards point guards right now, Monte Morris, DeLon Wright, Anthony Black is the perfect future point guard at the eighth pick. But at nine, the Jazz take Taylor Hendricks, 6'9 forward from UCF. All Utah has for sure on their roster is Walker Kessler. So anyone outside of center is a good fit. Hendricks is a big 3 and D player, which literally every team needs. One of the best defenders in the draft. He hit 40% from three in college. Great fit next to Walker Kessler because he is versatile too. So he could play the three, in fact, if Utah wants to go really big with Laurie Markkinen. At 10, our second big trade, the Mavericks get Clint Capella and the 15th pick. The Hawks get Tim Hardaway Jr. and the 10th pick, and they take Grady Dick, 6'6", shooting guard at Kansas. So the Mavs and Hawks basically swap picks. Where have we seen that before? But seriously, I love this trade so much. Dallas needs win-now players, right? Clint Capella, perfect fit. They're the worst center team in the NBA right now with awful rim protection and rebounding. Clint Capella does both. When was he at his best? with ball-dominant James Harden in Houston. So it's a perfect fit with Luka. And the Hawks easily move on Yeka Okongwu to their permanent center, but they get shooting, which they need. They were the 27th worst three-point shooting team last year. Grady Dick maybe has the funniest name in the draft. He's also maybe the best shooter outside of Jordan Hawkins. And he is a good cutter on offense, a really solid defender. Plus, Tim Hardaway Jr. provides even more floor spacing. At 11, the Magic get Casey Wallace, a 6'2 guard out of Kentucky. Now, Orlando was upset because they planned on taking Grady Dick for shooting, but that's also why Atlanta had to move up. Instead, the Magic take Wallace, whose specialty is spot-up shooting, which works well with Paolo Bancaro, Franz Wagner, and Oscar Thompson. Now, he's not a great shooter off the dribble, but more backcourt depth is a plus. At 12, the Thunder take Leonard Miller, 6'9 forward from the Ignite. This is higher than some people have in their mock drafts. So, look, I could see OK KC trading out of this draft, but he is a really good fit with Chet Holmgren. Miller is a good rebounder and inside finisher, while Chet is a good shot blocker and can space the floor. Miller shot 67% at the rim, and he's that versatile type of player that OKC likes. His weakness is shooting, so he could just play traditional center in lineups without Chet. At 13, the Raptors take Derek Lively, the second 7-1 center from Duke. Now, after the big trade earlier in the draft with Houston to get uh, Amen, Toronto takes the second best center outside of Victor Wimbanyama. A big need for them is rim protection, and Lively is a mobile big who can guard out to the perimeter, but uses his huge 7-8 wingspan to recover to get blocks. His offense is limited, but they are getting one of the best on defense, rebounding, and overall rim protection in college. Precious Achua is nice at center, but he's undersized. Lively seven foot one fills a big time need. And the last pick in the lottery is the Pelicans getting Jordan Hawkins, six four guard from UConn. Now the Pels also one of the worst three point shooting teams last year. Hawkins elite in college, 39% from deep on almost eight attempts. That's almost Clay Thompson range, but he's also a good defender like Clay. Not a guy who's gonna guard the other team's best player necessarily, but he's not gonna get played off the floor on defense either. Look, I have to stress all of these picks outside of like the top five are all over the place. Like this mock that I've just laid out, the players could get swapped in any direction. And what was Gary Paris talking about? The player who's hitting a vape pen in the locker room? Like this draft actually is a lot of fun and I'm looking forward to it. But one scandal, forget about the vape pen, okay? One thing that we have found out is definitely true is that an NBA ref was using a burner account on Twitter. Now the NBA went ahead, took him off of the finals this year, but the story behind this whole thing is crazy. Check it out. 